I find it interesting that Senator Paul is saying, accusing us of having a gimme, gimme, gimme attitude towards federal spending when, in fact, New Jersey is a donor state and we get 61 cents back on every dollar we sent to Washington. And interestingly, Kentucky gets a dollar 51 on every dollar they send to Washington. So if Senator Paul wants to start looking at where he's going to cut spending to afford defense, maybe he should start looking at cutting the pork barrel spending that he brings home to Kentucky. All right, take that, Senator Paul. And here is Senator <laughs> Rand Paul joining Dom Giordano. Senator, good to talk with you again. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Dom. I'm glad to be with you. Well, you know, it's always a great time when we have you on because you are in the center. What you brought in a very short time to the Senate is what Governor Christie, who used to be an esteemed guest, calls esoteric. So I guess I'm esoteric and you're esoteric. Yeah, you know, the thing about the, all the spending, and this is what uh, really wasn't adequately debated up here. When we debated the funding for Sandy, right. I actually supported giving them one year's worth of funding and then mm -hmm. offset the spending that we spent on Sandy, offset it with spending cuts from money that we're spending overseas, giving to countries that are burning our flag. So you would think, you know, most Republicans would support that. One, we help people in need. The government, you know, can have mm -hmm. a role, but we didn't add to the deficit by doing it. What I objected to was many, and often some of the Republicans, who just said they just want it all. They want everything, and they didn't care whether we offset it. That's what got us in this problem, and that is the kind of attitude we need to fight against, and we need to say we have to be responsible. And, uh, you know, that's what I've been fighting ever since I've come up here. I'm, I've, I'm the one with the five-year balanced budget that actually well, eliminates federal departments. What's your response to, now the debate comes out, we hear this often in states like New Jersey, Senator, where Governor Christie says they only get, what, 61 cents back for every dollar they send to Washington. You're in Washington. You're taking that and you're hijacking it to Kentucky. <laughs> Well, one, it's just not true. I haven't hijacked anything to Kentucky. I haven't voted for any special projects in Kentucky. We do have two military bases. I do support them, but we've actually never had any special legislation that's allowed me to direct money to anybody in Kentucky. So really, the formula of the way things go out is it goes more money goes to poor people. But I'm one of the ones trying to reform the entitlement programs and make sure it only goes to those who can mm -hmm. work, not to those who won't work. So really, you know, it's sort of a tiff that's been created that I think I'm ready to get beyond this because the thing is, is the party needs to be bigger in New England and in the Northeast. The Republican Party is on life support. So really squabbling among Republicans is just not useful. He started it, but I'm ready to end it. And uh, so I'm hoping that we can, you know, get back to attacking Democrats. Certainly, aren't there enough Democrats to attack? Uh, I would agree, but uh, I know from firsthand experience, when you don't go fully down the Christie line, you're seeing what happens. But I wanted to get you to something, though, that's a serious disagreement between the two of you, Senator, not just this little back and forth stuff. And that involved the uh, Christie saying it's esoteric, these debates over the NSA and related matters. I'm more in your camp on this, but I think it's a fairly tight call on providing for security while at the same time protecting our liberties. And Christie seems to represent the establishment. You represent, to me, a door to young people with this and others that are open to hearing about privacy rights and civil rights. You know, one of the things is that when you talk to young people and you tell them about the Republican message of low taxes, balanced budgets, and less regulation, they sort of have a blank look and they say, well, I don't own anything. I don't right. have anything that's taxed. I don't pay much in taxes. But I do have a cell phone, and I am on the Internet, and I'm concerned about the government snooping and spying on Americans without a warrant. The other thing is there are other libertarian-like ideas. One of them is that you shouldn't be detained or indefinitely detained without a trial. And unfortunately, the Congress and the president last year pa passed legislation that says that an American could be accused, sent to Guantanamo Bay with no trial, no accusation, basically forever. And to me, that's reminiscent of some of the bad times in our history, when we did that to the Japanese in World War II, when we had times in the Old South when blacks were detained or violently uh, mm -hmm. assaulted or even killed. 
without any kind of trial. So I think these issues, these libertarian issues that some think are esoteric, are actually great Bill of Rights issues that show that the Republican Party can and will stand up for minority rights, will stand whether it's your religion or the color of your skin. We are the party that does believe in justice. And I got to say, I and my listeners, we're charting you on this, and at times there's slight disagreement, but I haven't heard you say anything that I think is wildly out of bounds to this wacko bird stuff that Senator McCain and others talk about. In other words, I, I think you've been very sober about these while differing at times. Would you have voted to defund that bill in the House last week, the NSA? Yes. Um, I think what we need to do with the NSA, I'm, I'm for spying. I'm all for spying on terrorists. But I just want to get, you know, go one terrorist at a time through judges' warrants and not all Americans. The fact that they're doing all Americans, to me, goes against really the spirit of the American Revolution. When James Otis stirred things up and John Adams said it was part of what we fought for, it was against warrants written by soldiers and against the idea of generalized warrants, a warrant that went to no named individual. Mm -hmm. So when we wrote the Fourth Amendment, we said you have to name the person, the place, and the things you want, and then a policeman can't write the warrant. You have to ask a judge. These were incredibly important to our founding fathers, and I think we shouldn't give up on this. And so, yeah, I think the NSA program has gone too far. Yeah, that's the gut instinct, uh, Senator, and most of our listeners. And I've seen some of these surveys that mirror my listeners who are all about the government doing whatever has to be done to protect us, but are very concerned with where this has gone. What's the most cutting line that you seem to react to back with Governor Christie, particularly in this challenge, about the 9-11 widows? Now, that to me seemed to be really trying to paint you into a corner. I think it's a low blow for anyone to use someone's tragedy. You know, the president has used people's tragedy to try to advance, you know, uh, different I I agendas that he has. And it's sort of the same way here. Is there anybody in America who really doesn't feel great sympathy for those who died in 9-11 and lost family members? But here's the challenge. Let, let me get you on the record, you know, directly here to it. He's saying, though, what you propose would allow us to be open to this stuff again. We can't take any chances here. What you're saying may be nice in a book, but it's going to allow a smidgen of a chance to be open to that kind of attack. No, and the, the, what's wrong with that argument is if we're ever attacked again, they'll say, oh, it was the Bill of Rights. We should have uh, really eliminated all liberties. I think you can have both. I think you can have security and liberty, and I think you can follow the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and capture terrorists. I have heard of no evidence, I mean zero evidence, that any of the plots that we have stopped could not have been gotten with a, with a traditional warrant. They say they like having all this data, and they, mm -hmm. do, they do go through it, but every one, every instance of someone they stopped, a real informant gave a name or a suspicion of a name, and the original mm -hmm. uh, work was done with a warrant, and then they started combing through other records. But they always got the tip off from an informant. Parting question for you, an area that I think you're right, you know, we're centering on the food fight here, but an area you're passionate on, I have high hopes for, and you may even have more knowledge, that this opens us up as conservatives to minority communities, is the school choice issue. I know you've spoken in Philadelphia, where I'm from, and other places around this. Talk about that, the power of it, and how it brings all these issues home together, I think. Well, I had two hearings this week, one at a charter school in Nashville, Tennessee, and the other one in D.C., D.C. not only has a lot of charter schools, it's got a voucher program that's been around for a while, mm -hmm. and they also have private school scholarships. So we had kids come in from all of them. You would be amazed at these kids. They're so articulate, and I was so proud of them going on to college and the successes. You know, one young woman uh, learned Mandarin in high school, went to a private school, Georgetown Day, went on to Oberlin College, is mm -hmm. now going off to Japan for a job that she's gotten. And just amazing. And I imagine what it must have been like in the original school where she was, and she got so lucky to get out. One parent told about a 1,000 kids who are trying to get into a charter school that has 30 openings. You know, really, that what that does is it, 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 it um, competition, you know, breeds excellence, and the schools will get better and better. There's no reason why every public school couldn't become a charter school, which means it would be more freedom for the teachers to decide the curriculum and how you teach and less uh, intrusiveness from bureaucrats. What in the immediate future, Senator, next couple of months, what's going to really be a centerpiece for Rand Paul? What are you looking at? 
Uh, we're going to go around the country on a tour of school choice. Uh, we're going to go in the near future to Chicago and to Milwaukee, the home of the vouchers, and we're going to keep talking about this because the Democrats in my state are opposing school choice. They're opposing charter schools, and the status quo is allowing about 50 percent of kids in a lot of these neighborhoods not mm -hmm. to graduate from high school if you don't graduate from high school, your unemployment rate is greater than 25%. So when the president says he cares about the middle class and about people getting into the middle class, he doesn't care enough to fix the school problem. And we're going to show him that Republicans can and will. Thank you, Senator. Rand Paul, thank you very much. Thanks for all the time you share with us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Tom.